Welcome to the first video on torsion. In this, we'll examine the distribution of strain and the change in shape of a bar subject to torsion. And we'll talk about the distribution uh, of stress in a bar subject to torsion and what those shear stresses must end up summing to. Today, we'll be talking about uh, the effect that torsion has on uh, circular bars. So if we have a bar loaded like this in torsion about the x-axis, that's the axis going uh, along the direction of the bar, uh, we've got you know, the case that the integral of our shear stress uh, over uh, times the uh, radius, the location of that stress, uh, over the full area. Right, so the radius is going to be distance from the center. It has to be equal to the torsion uh, itself because we have to have uh, or equal and opposite to the torsion uh, because we're going to have to have um, equilibrium about uh, in moment about the x axis uh, and so uh, we're going to have to maintain this now uh, when we're doing that we're going to have to do uh, something similar to what we did when we determined uh, the distribution of stresses for bending moment, which is to say we're going to have to look at the deformed shape, and from the deformed shape uh, we're going to be able to determine the, uh, the strain distribution, and from the strain distribution we'll be able to make assumptions uh, of our linear, uh, if we have a linear elastic material and we're in that region, uh, then we'll be able to determine the stress distributions. So, let's look at how this will deform. A bar in torsion uh, will deform like this, assuming uh, it is a circular bar. A circular bar is not going to be subject to any sort of uh, warping or, or distortion uh, due to torsion. So all it's going to experience is shear as each individual slice of, uh, of the bar attempts to slide past uh, and rotate relative to uh, the slices, the elements uh, next to it. So if it's going to rotate like this, and we're going to go from being like this blue bar, or blue line, from B to A, and if we twist this end, uh, but hold uh, the side with B in place, uh, then we're going to end up rotating A from this point to this point, assuming that we are in clockwise torsion, as we are up here. So let's label uh, this rotation uh, phi and we'll use this uh, to determine our, uh, our strain distribution. Obviously uh, when we look at this uh, A to AB uh, is going to be moving quite a bit whereas right here at the centroid of the circle of the bar, uh, we're not experiencing anything. Look at the change in element uh, shape from this one to this one. Uh, my perspective is off uh, after a couple tries and I've given up, but we've gone from a square, if we rotated this to look at it head-on, we would have had a square here, whereas over here, because these, this ring has been rotated, we've got a, a rhombus shape right here for our elemental shapes. As a result, that's going to tell us that we're experiencing pure shear. And those of you who remember 
shear strain, we'll know that this angle right here is the shear strain with, uh, with no added uh, transformations required. That means that that is this angle right here, and it's just the shear strain. Uh, now, you'll notice I've not given the direction for the shear strain like I always used to in previous lectures, and that is because uh, while we do know what plane it's active in, right, it's, it's orthogonal to the x-axis, we know that. However, if it's right here or here, sure, it's uh, shear stress in the x-y direction. Up top, top and bottom, uh, 12 o'clock and, and 6 o'clock, it's going to be uh, shear stress in the xz direction because it's going to be in the z direction. Uh, so generally when we're working with torsion we're just going to have tau for the uh, shear stress and uh, gamma for the shear strain and it's going to be uh, our rate of twist okay or the angle of twist is what uh, the shear stress is called. Now we can look at this our total rotation which we've called phi and our angle of twist gamma and if we just add an easy element to measure the length of the rod from A to B or from B to A if you like we can write that L the total length times the rotation right here which is the uh, shear strain outside on the uh, outer edge is going to be equal to uh, let's call the uh, let's call the radius rho because that's what the uh, the book I believe does times phi our rotation right there. So you'll notice right away uh, that this is uh, a function of rho, or rho is this. So it's going to be large out here for a large radius, and it's going to be small going all the way to zero uh, at the centroid. So that's, that's important. Uh, because that means that our shear strain is going to be a linear function of how far we are from the center uh, of the bar experiencing torsion. Turn to uh, side two.